Hey, welcome everyone in this new video tutorial about the multiplayer combat editor. In this video, we're going to learn how you can use the example character, how you can use the example characters MC provide and create your game based upon them. So, first thing you want to do is to check if they are working within your map. So, for that, you want to specify that this map needs to be spawning them. How can you do this? By going to settings, world settings. This is going to open up the settings of this map. And then you have something say called, called game mode override. This is actually asking you, uh, do you want to, see, to, to tell this map to change the rules managing it? And you want to tell that. And you want to say that BPX game mode is going to be the game mode, the, the rules you want to override there. Game modes are things that override rules. And if you open that up, this is the properties of that game mode. So basically the rules managing the world. And it's telling what type of character it is supposed to spawn. So if you were hitting play, you're going to spawn with a top-down character. So that's the, that's the first char example character in the list. And you can hit tab to switch characters. like this. So these are the, the four, so this is the twin stick example. These are the four examples provided by MC. And they are set up in a way that allows you to easily customize them. And we're going to see how you can do this. So if you close, we are going to go in our example folder, go to our character folder, open up player archetypes, and these are the four characters I was talking about. So, for instance, if you want a third-person player, you can drag and drop that in your blue, in your own folder. Dra drop it. Type, click on copy. Go there. Drag and drop that in your blue, blueprints folder. Move, move, move that there. Go to blueprints. And actually, blueprints is quite a bad name for that, this is going to be character, like this. We're going to create a new folder called system. We're going to go to our character folder and we are going to move our game mode into our system folder, like this. So in our character folder, we now have our own TPS player, which we are going to rename BP my character, for instance. And we're going to tell our game mode it is supposed to spawn that character. So go back to our system folder, open up our game mode, tell that game mode that the default pawn class is going to be the, the character we just created, my character, like this. Hit compile, and then we're going to tell our, hit, hit save, save whole or control shift S, and tell our map in the world settings that it should use our third person game mode. Hit save, hit play. And then you have the character you just created, you just duplicated as your character and you cannot hit tab to switch. That's because the logic was contained in the player, the, the logic, the switching logic was contained in my player controller and we did not copy that. We only copied, co copied, copied the character. So you have your character, but it has my mesh. So first thing you want to do is to specify what mesh it's using. So open that up, close the game mode. Then you have a setup graph. Go there and you have a lot of logic there. That's all. You can open up all graph and you see there, there is a lot of logic there. Don't worry about this. Uh, this is all set up in a way that's easy for you to use and customize. And we're going to see what you can do together. So if you go to your setup graph, you have something called set metrics on the top. And it's telling you that you can remove these functions to actually set up your character mesh. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to delete that, hit compile, hit save. 
And then we are going to double click our, our mesh. And we are, we are actually going to hit play. And you can see we have no mesh anymore. So we need to set up what mesh we have there. So you can say, I don't know why it's still showing us a mesh, whereas we do not have one. I think I know why. That's because the parent class of that character is still telling our blueprint to actually have that mesh. But it doesn't matter, we can still specify what we want there. So for instance, I can specify I want my Unreal Manica and it's not being updated. But if I'm hitting play, we can see I have my Manica. So we are actually going to go back to our setup graph, type in set character metrics. Not like that, set mesh matrix. Mm, I want to retrieve the nodes how I actually deleted, so I'm going to hit Control Z until I get them back, but I cannot do that, so I'm just going to check how are, are the archetypes built there. I just I, I just want to grab the store character values. That that was the name I was looking for. So you can actually set up your values there. That's quite strange. I think it was supposed to be fixed. So what is the base mesh I want? You can find the mesh you want there. So for instance, the SK Manica, like this, and I want my animation blueprint there. I want to hit compile, go to the viewport, and it's not being updated as well. But, and it's not working there as well. I don't know what's going on. If I'm removing that, hitting play. So there is something going on there. And I'm not sure what. I'm going to hit compile, close that up, and I'm going to open up our project once again. I was thinking about a logic in our parent class overriding the, our child class logic, but I just checked in the parent and there is nothing telling our mesh to have that, to display that skeletal mesh. So I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe it's just a refreshing bug or a duplication bug. Maybe I shouldn't have duplicated that <clears throat> this way. But it, uh, the workflow is asking you to, so I don't see why it should not. So we are back in our blueprint and it doesn't have a mesh. So if we delete the logic contained, the, the logic I wanted us to delete there, the logic which, w which was displaying a mesh. And if we go to our viewport, I think we can just say what we want. So I want that mesh and I want my animation blueprint. I want to hit compile, hit save, hit play. And now we have the character I created. as our base character. But it cannot use it cannot it cannot use the skills I created in MC. Why? Because the skill I created in MC are actually using the mesh, the skeletal mesh I'm using and the animation are not compatible with with the other skeletons obviously. Uh, an animation is tied to a skeleton. So you cannot use you cannot use the skills I created in MC with your own skeletal mesh. You, you can use them, but you'll have to specify an animation 
which your skeleton can use. And we're going to see that in another video. So if we go back to our and so there there are a lot of things, uh, a lot of strange things going on there. So for instance, I can move and use my skills in the same time. And when I strafe left and right, uh, the character the character is not uh, rotating. And these are all settings built in Unreal 4 itself, not in MC. These are all settings you can set in your BP character, character movement, capsule component. Uh, for instance, in there you have stuff like use controller, you rotation you. And if you uncheck that, now your character is not going to rotate towards uh, the camera. And there are a lot of settings like this, but it's uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial. This tutorial purpose is just to show you how you can quickly get a character rolling out of uh, the example characters. So you can find these information on the internet, how to set this up. So the character, the duplicated character is set up in a way where you can go to the keyboard input graph. And in there, there are a lot of things. They are all the buttons controlling the logic of the character. So for instance, if you press left click, it's triggering your main skill. And if you press right click, it's triggering your second skill, etc. These are all logic built in the parent class. So you can delete you can delete the inputs for instance and replace them for with your own. But this is going to be the subject of another video tutorial. And if you go to the setup graph, I don't want to save that. I just deleted not, I didn't want to delete, and my control Z was not working. And I didn't want to save that, so I'm, go I'm just going to open that up once again. I knew I actually saved my work uh, before deleting the nodes because I'm I'm always pressing Control S. <clears throat> so I'm just going to show you how the setup graph is built, so you can modify the the logic if we open up our what was previously opened. And if we go to our setup graph, double click that, uh, unzoom. For instance, if you zoom in, you can see on the manager, I tell this character to have a body feedback, a team color material, and these are all the sub, these are the subject of a lot of other tutorials you can already watch. And you can get rid of the logic or add it as you wish. So for instance, if you don't want your character to have a team color material, of, you, you can get rid of that. You can tell what team your character is by default. Uh, you, don't have, you don't need to touch to that. It's just a, a, a base logic we have to implement. If you delete this, you will be able to set up your own action rules uh, like in the like in the action manager videos. If you delete that logic, you will be able to set up your stats like the stat manager video, like in the stat manager video. This is actually adding the name above our head when we are being focused. And we need to specify a certain height. You can specify a certain height if you want. Like this. You, 
you can tell what skill it is learning by removing this and checking the skill manager video. And these are all the base inputs of my game, which I manually added. When you hit play, there is an action manager on the top left, an action overlay on the top left, and it's actually displaying and it's actually displaying the the action I set up there. And you're, you could see my character was actually performing an animation and that's because I add a bit of logic in the level blueprint just because I wanted to check something and I forgot to remove it. So our character is not performing any animation, obviously. So these are just telling, so th this is just a node I'm calling to tell my action manager that my action jump is actually triggered by the space bar. But this is not actually directly related to the inputs. This is just a text being displayed. So if you modify this by E, for instance, it's not going to bind the jump on E. It's just going to read E in the top left window there. And the last thing you can we can see in the setup graph is this pawn add event, which is actually telling our character to display it feedback, to display floating text, not to show the mouse cursor, to show our crosshair. And it's actually calling the spawn add parent, which you can double click. And in there, there is a lot of things we, we are doing which are all being covered by other videos, uh, spawning overlays and stuff like this. And you can copy all of this, go back to your character, delete the spawn add, paste this. Drag this in here, drag the spawn add logic there, add a pin like this. And then you have everything setting up the HUD in your own blueprint and you can delete what you want and use what you want. So for instance, the first node is actually creating a else bar. So if I'm hitting play, it's the else bar, it's this one. So if you don't, if you are not calling the logic, it's, it's just not going to create it. And you can also specify what else bar you want to create there and specify your own logic however you want. Remove the skill overlay or build your own one. Add your own stat overlay and stuff like that. So first thing I want to do is get rid of the action overlay, for instance. Hit compile, hit save. And I'm much better without my action overlay. So most of the things in there are covered by other videos in their respective uh, categories, manager categories. So I invite you to go check them out when you see a node and you are not understanding what it does. You, you usually have a video covering this. So it's, go it's going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.